So uh, we're going to take a look at the long axis and short axis view of the plantaris. Um, if you extend the toes like this and you palpate the foot here, you can feel very cord-like structure very clearly. And if you follow this cord-like structure upwards, you're going to end up at the place where the insertion is of the uh, plantar fascia. And if you see here, it's a little bit medial. Uh, this is the calcaneus and it's a little bit medial to the calcaneus. So this is the place where you're going to look. That's where you're going to put your probe. Uh, as for the settings on your machine, uh, you have to scan through the fat pad. That means that uh, you have a lot of uh, scattering and uh, a loss of signal. So uh, preferably you try to go on a lower frequency. So here I put it now on a lower frequency. Uh, it's going to be less clear the image, but it's going to give you more information in the, in the depth here. Uh, and sometimes with the dynamic range, if you put it too high, uh, it's not very clear. If you put it a bit lower, you see a bit more distinction between the, the, the layers. So that's the most important part for the settings. Then uh, what we look for on this image is uh, the calcaneal bone. Right here. So this here is the calcaneus. Now the shape is that it goes down here and then it extends downwards in this direction. So it's normal to have a bit of a steep, uh, or a little bit of a slope here and then it goes down. Um, if you have a heel spur, this will be a line that is exactly um, horizontal in this direction and then goes down very abruptly. Uh, and you will see that in this area. But in this case, there's no spurring. Um, then we have the uh, fascia. Here we see the fascia. Uh, distally we can see it clearer in his uh, case. This is the deep layer of the fascia. This is the superficial layer of the fascia. The superficial layer I can see here and follow downwards. The deep one here, I kind of lose it, but it's okay. You just follow this line this direction. And uh, you know that if you're gonna do your measurement, it's gonna be in around this, uh, this area. So I follow this line here. I measure, go up and uh, a normal, uh, uh, normally is somewhere between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. Above 0 0.4 could be uh, indicating that there is a, a fasciopathy. Then we make the image <coughs> uh, again. If we compress with probe a little bit and then we make this movement, you can see on the image that the fat pad will slide over the uh, plantar fascia like this you see that the, the tendon stays still and the fascia is moving so sometimes when it's difficult to distinguish the fascia from the fat pad this is a trick that you can use by pressing and moving in this direction from here we go a little bit uh, distally in this direction we see the fascia here and it's going upwards this is still the fascia this is still the fascia it's going more superficial it's becoming thinner because it's uh, spreading out. And then uh, below it, you can see the intrinsic foot muscles. If you can do a little flexion of the toes and extension, you see that they are attached also to the fascia right here. So uh, in this location, we're quite far uh, distal. This is where you can find uh, a plantar fibromatosis or lederhosen disease. We go a little bit up back to our uh, origin. Here, this is a mid portion where you can see a mid portion fasciopathy sometimes by blunt trauma or by overuse but the most typical one that you see in your clinic is a fasciopathy in this location and that's usually because of overuse <coughs>